Hello, 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 everybody. This is Christine Bertram, and I'm coming to you live from Fond du Lac, Wisconsin. I am in my home slash studio. <laughs> Actually, I'm in a little nook of my bedroom where I have set up shop for the time being. Yay! Basically for all summer long. <laughs> so exciting. So happy Thursday, everybody. Yay! We made it through almost to the end of another work week. It feels so weird to be stamping only with you live once a week. <laughs> I'll tell you that it's like it comes and it goes so fast. I'm going to try to find you girls so Christine I can Bertram. watch your comments. I see Bonnie's on here. Kate's on here. Wow, you girls are bright-eyed and bushy-tailed and right on time. I love it. So... Super excited today, girls. It was a beautiful day. The storms rolled through and it left some sun every now and then and some cooler temperatures. We were a little bit warm. Hi, Becky. Thanks for joining. Wow. Okay, so I'm going to apologize in advance if you hear any crazy tools. <laughs> Hi, Chris. Or hammers or pounding or banging. <laughs> the guys are working outside right now. Hi, Godmother Karen. <laughs> um, the guys are outside working right now, and you will not believe how much progress has been made. Oh, my goodness. The last time I went live, which was last Thursday, they had buttoned everything up on Thursday night, and there was no work done on Friday or Saturday or Sunday. Hi, Linda. Hi, Susan. Nice for you to join us, girls. So basically, we knew that there was some bad weather coming in. Hi, Arliss. So the project for this week was to put the trusses up. Hi, Mary. So the trusses, oh my gosh, you can't put up trusses in the middle of all this bad, crazy, stormy weather. So I had luckily, um, have, we had all the things lined up. So the power company came and took down the street light. Like there was a power line that runs from the street line to the main pole. So they had that down yesterday. The storms rolled through. And this morning at eight o'clock, there was a crane parked outside the back driveway and they had the trusses all put up in a matter of two hours. Hi, Elaine. <laughs> no storms by you, Arliss, but you've had enough rain for, oh yeah, we've had a lot of rain. The streets were flooded yesterday, crazy. So, so all in the middle of all that rain, they got the trusses up today and they made short order of it. So Mitch and Mark and Tyler worked for two hours and they got them all put up. And this crane, so Tyler, hi Bobby. So Tyler would hook up the, the whatever, the hook to the trusses and then the crane would lift it up and Tyler would guide it to the guys and then they would put them on. <laughs> so hi Bonnie Brown. So the trusses are up, so exciting, in two hours, and now they're sheeting it. So half of it is already sheeted. Boom! And now I had to uh, call Menards, and the shingles are being delivered on Saturday. So girls, it's getting real. Hi, Kelly. Well, it's been getting real the whole time. <laughs> so, oh, yay! Kelly and Karen are all set up to make cards. So exciting! Yay! So, wow, so that's a little update on the project. So, my goal for you is I sent you a month or two months worth of pictures all in like one snapshot. So my goal is after the shingles are put on girls, you'll get another lot of pictures showing the framing, showing the roofing, the trusses. And, you know, so there'll be another chunk because that is another stage of the completion of the building. So yay, <laughs> girls. So last week and the week before, a lot of you have been giving me ideas for what to call our escapades or <laughs> Thursday night stampin' escapades together. Hi, Sue. And girls, lots of good ideas, lots of good suggestions, but I think we narrowed it down to what we're going to call it. And when I was talking to everybody, I thought, well, something with Thursday because we're going to be meeting Thursday. But the more I thought about it, it was like, well, what happens if we don't do a live on a Thursday? So maybe we don't want to have Thursday. There was stampin' Therapy Thursday. There was so many good ideas, girls, and I really considered each one of them. But all of them kind of came together to one final thing, and I'm so excited that I think the plan is to go forward, forward with Stampin' Live in the Hive. Christine and her honeybees are here to stamp. So what do you think of that? 
So that leaves it open to, it could be any night of the week in case we switch off of Thursdays. Hi, Char. Hi, Angela. So Stampin' Live in the Hives, or Stampin' Live in the Hive with Christine and her honeybees. So I'm not in my hive right now. I guarantee you that this is not the hive. But my goal is that by September 2nd, that we do the first live and it's gonna be for game night. And I'm hoping Kelly will be sitting right next to me for it. So hi, Debbie. Yay, that's awesome. Where you're from, you girls, tell me where you're from. I know a lot of you already know that I know where you're from, but I love it when you mention on here where you're from. I had somebody from Hawaii last week, somebody from Pennsylvania. Not to say that girls from Wisconsin aren't, aren't good. I'm like, yeah, everybody's good, but it's so great to see how far we can reach out. So, all right, Bonnie likes Stampin' Live in the Hive. So girls, thank you so many of you gave so many good suggestions. I really appreciate that. So and I saw lots of hearts come through. So. I cannot wait to share the hive with all of you. It is going to be so decorated with bee stuff. You probably have no idea. And Angela Tucker gave me a little housewarming hive gift already. And so I've got that tucked away for when I can put it out there. So, oh, the guys were making fun of me at work today. They were teasing me that I have too much stuff and that's why I'm building a she shed. So, hi, Anne from Vermont. Thanks for joining. Yay. Okay, so that's a little bit on the project. It's going very smoothly, girls and guys. <laughs> I'm really happy with the progress. So also, I've noticed that some people are sharing. I really appreciate when you share the video. I get to reach a little bit further then and share my love and inspiration with other peoples. So that <laughs> peoples, but with other people. I think I was reading Kelly's comment and it was there was something plural in there. So I really appreciate it, girls, when you share the video. So thank you to everybody who did that already. That's awesome. Um, so tonight's class is the in color card class, and it's kind of like a catalog launch party. So I had three in-person classes planned. So I did one last night, I have one tomorrow, and I have one Saturday morning, and then tonight's the online version. And guess what? I had 15 people sign up for the online version. And I know, Becky, you're watching. Um, Kelly and, and Karen, you're watching. Um, who else? Su uh, Susan is as well. So there's a bunch of people that are watching that are doing the class with me. And so we'll get started in just a little bit. But thank you to everybody else who also, like Bonnie and a couple other girls, Tammy just stopped in last night for the catalog launch party. I'm so excited to be safer stamping with all of you <laughs> together. It's so much fun to have that social interaction with people. So super, super exciting. Yay. Hi, Dawn. Hi, Stacy Warner. Thanks for joining. So live in the hive, girls. That's what our what we're going to be saying. So excited. I have my little list. I feel like the teacher in me comes out when I go through stuff like this. So, so I do have some learning and tricks that I want to teach you too. I thought that tonight would be a good night because we're opening up some new products and I want to show you some of the things like how to put the stickers on an ink pad and how to put your stickers on a stamp set. So tonight's going to be a little bit about learning because to be honest with you, the five cards that we're making tonight are easier than last week. I'll tell you girls, those fun folds, <laughs> they sucked. <laughs> they sucked the juice out of me. I think we were nonstop for two hours. Hi, Tina. And we, we are gonna have that tonight. So it's gonna be a little bit less stressful. And since all five cards are exactly the same, except for the color, we're gonna put just two of them together live. And I think that while I talk and go through things, then the rest of the time, the people that are doing the cards can finish putting them together. Hi, Tanya, I would like to call out that congratulations are in order to Tanya. She is the newest member of the Be Happy Stampers. Tanya joined my team. I don't know, Tanya, was it midnight? <laughs> I was still up working on some stuff and I saw Tanya's email come through from Stampin' Up that she joined my team. And I'm super excited and happy for her. Uh, and Nicole Donahue too, she also just joined the team on Monday and so she's a Be Happy Stamper. Girls, right now is the best time to sign up. There's like two or three times throughout the year that Stampin' Up offers promotions for signing up and we don't necessarily always know when they are. We know one is always during celebration, which was January, February, and March, but they sometimes do one in the summer and it happens to be in June. So right now, when you sign up, 
you get a bundle, any value bundle. You could choose the one that's $60 and it's free with your starter kit. And it's anything in your starter kit up to $125. And I wouldn't even call it a starter kit. It's basically what's on your wish list. Just sign up to be a discount shopper. And that's what Tanya did. That's what Nicole did. She's making her wedding thank yous and she wanted to get paper. So girls, right now is a really good time to sign up. So my little disclaimer about that is if anybody's interested in knowing more about what it, what it all entails or doesn't entail, it's so like you don't have to do anything. <laughs> you have, um, I'm on one at the end of the extreme and I'm very rare. <laughs> so I'm a little bit crazy when it comes to stamping girls. I think you know that. <laughs> so, but yeah, so if anybody's interested in knowing more information about that, please reach out to me. I would love to help you and have you be part of my team. Yay. Okay, so what we're going to do tonight is we are going to go through a lot of the new ink colors. Oh my gosh, there's what? Just Jade, Magenta Madness, there's Cinnamon Cider, there's Bumblebee, oh my gosh, I love the name, and then there is Misty Moonlight. What is your favorite? Have you seen them yet? Okay, I think that we need to flip this down so that you can start to see these beautiful new ink colors. So girls, what I'm gonna do is just show you a few of the new things that <laughs> are in the catalog. Okay, so introducing the 2020-2022 ink color assortment. So this is what I was just listing off to you. <laughs> yes, you girls love my crazy. <laughs> I love it too. So these are the new ink colors. So which one is your favorite? Tammy's is Misty Moonlight. Oh, if I had to pick, I am a toss-up between Just Jade and Misty Moonlight. Girls, you, I think if you know me, you know I'm a purple fan. So anything other than purple, I'm like, eh. um, I was not liking this one, and it's growing on me. The Cinnamon Cider, great outdoorsy, manly, neutral color. It's really pretty with the flowers. I love the Bumblebee, too. The Magenta Madness, it's growing on me, too. So this is the new in color DSP. So it comes in a pack like this. It's six by six sheets and all five colors. And it comes with different patterns. So these are back to back, back to back. So you've got the dots on one side and the splotches on the other. And then there's a whole nother uh, set of papers that are back to back. We have the wood looking grain, <laughs> the wood grain looking. <laughs> and then we have words in different languages. And I don't know if you can read them, but it says to love what we do and share what we love as we help others make world, uh, what is it? To help others make worth, well, it's the statement of the heart. And I don't know it by heart, but <laughs> but it's in all the different languages. So um, very, very cool. So Bobby's favorite color is just Jade. So that's super exciting. So I wanted to share with you here in the book, if you don't have a catalog, you got to reach out to me so I can help you get your hands on a catalog. I have this open to the color collections on page 143, where you will see the in color collections for 2020 and 2022, as well as last year's that roll into the this coming year. So you can get cardstock, the ink pads, the refills, and then the blend. Now the blends do not come in the Bumblebee. They're in these colors right here. So the mo mo Moonlight, the Jade, Magenta, and Cinnamon Cider. Now, this is a little confusing, so I wanted to point this out to you because in class, people have been saying, well, don't they have paper? Where, like, where are the ink pads? Can you buy them as a bundle? Yes, yes, and yes. Up here, you can see that they have eight and a half by 11 and 12 by 12 in both of the ink color ensembles. You can also get the markers in both in color sets, they're here. You can get the, uh, what to do? The reinkers are only available per color family there. You have to buy them individually if you want them as the in colors, but this is where you have the in color DSP. And then down here is where they have the in colors. So somebody asked me, it was actually Bobby asked about the purple posy. The purple posy is not available as an in color from last year. Uh, they had so many issues with the formula that they just took it out of the line. They introduced it, had to retract it, introduced it, retract it, and now so you cannot get Purple Posy ink pad or re-inker. So in case that question comes up, girls, that's what's the story with Purple Posy. But these are all the ink colors. And so, oh, I love them. They're so pretty. And then um, on top of it, 
there's these little in color uh, enamel dots. Uh, big shout out to Diane Bogenhagen and Naughty Nancy Stormer for, oh, they loaned me a couple of these. They went on back order and are unavailable at the moment because they were such a hot commodity. <laughs> they will be back, so don't fear. They will be back, and uh, they will be available probably in about a month. Uh, so, and then here are the reinkers. So, the other thing I want to call out about the reinkers, girls, in case you're wondering, is the manufacturer of the bottles had to switch out gears to help with the crisis, the COVID crisis. So they went to change their manufacturing to something else. And so what's happening is there's a shortage now on these actual bottles. And so if you order them, they will be on back order and they will come as soon as they're available again. So the other thing I wanna show you is there's this really cool paper pack with envelopes that come in all the different new ink colors. This is part of the Jar of Love bundle. It comes with uh, sheets of cardstock that are a nice bigger size, so you can write lots more love note in there. And then you have the matching envelopes. So that is another in color item. And so let me move some of this stuff out of the way, girls, because what I want to show you is a tip or a trick that I have with these ink pads. So I don't know if all of you know this or not, but the ink colors come and they are marked with a little emblem at the top here that says in color. So here I have five of them. These are the new ink colors. And if you flip them over, there's a sticker on the back. Those stickers are for you to label your ink pads. They've been doing this for many years now. And sometimes you don't know that until you are told that's what they are. So I wondered if some of you don't know that, you put these stickers on. So just so you know, they come in English, French, <laughs> uh, Belgian, maybe, um, Chinese, and then there's a blank one. <laughs> maybe that's Japanese. I could be wrong. That could be Japanese. I honestly don't know. So people have seen just use the English one, and then they let the other ones go. And I like to use all of them. So what I do is I know that I can't read it, but I can still see the color. So what I do is I use the ones that are the other languages and I mark them all the way around so that when you have them stacked, no matter how which way you're looking at the stack, then you can still see the color. So Ann didn't know that. So yay, I reached out to Ann to show her that. So that's exciting. So the last one is a blank one. Now you're wondering, where do you put a blank one? Well, the blank one goes in here. So this one you have to be kind of careful because if you don't get it straight, it's a hard time, it's a humdinger to get that little guy out of there. And the other thing too, when you first open up your ink pads, you might get some of these little bits of plastic on them, just kind of wipe them off, that's okay. So there we've got one done, super cool. So when you go to open up your ink pad, just know that this plastic is on here. It helps them stay fresher longer. So they're sealed nice. Be careful not to pull the sticker off as you're opening them up. And I just wanna show you how it works. So I already got blue ink on that. I must have blue ink on my fingers already. So here's how I do this. I take this sticker and I go like that. And then I just pull off this part and throw that away. And then I go to the stickers. And the where the lip is here, that I call the front. To me, that's where I put <laughs> the one that's English. Because when I have my tray of stamp pads, that to me is the front. So now when you have these like this, you can see them. I wanna show you one more thing. So I'm gonna do the one that isn't labeled. The reason that they do the one on the inside is because when you have all your ink pads, how many of you have like five ink pads open at the same time because you're doing five different stamped images that can all use different colors? So when you have these lined up like this, they're both very dark. And so if you wouldn't have these colors here, you might accidentally ink up the wrong stamp in the, in the ink that you don't want and cross contam I call that cross contaminating your inks. So that's why it's important to put that color sticker right in the front, okay? So 
I, whenever I get new ink pads, I definitely take a few moments and I put my stickers on. Just a little tip, um, so you know, and honestly, we're not using any of these ink pads tonight because when my gal Gina and I designed the card, the, the design that we're making tonight, the in color ink pads were not available. So we couldn't do that, <laughs> we couldn't use them. So here's another trick in case you girls are new to stamping or you're not familiar with how to um, re-ink an ink pad. People ask, should I invest in reinkers? Well, that's a personal preference. I've learned my lesson over the years. I've been stamping for 20 years, and for the first 15 years or 14 years, I never bought reinkers. I thought, I don't need them. <laughs> my ink pads are going to last forever. Well, girls, they don't. If you're using your ink pads, you're going to end up eventually continue to you're grabbing ink out. They lose ink. I mean, ink will come out as you use it. So I highly recommend making the investment and in getting the reinkers. They're three dollars and seventy-five cents. Honestly, they will last you a lifetime, unless you're doing different techniques where you use baby wipes and uh, just different coloring with spritzer bottles. They might go a little faster, but. I always recommend getting the reinker when you get the ink pad. And how a reinker works, I don't know why this is green. <laughs> this used to not be green. I think it got discolored somehow. But this is a Versamark pad and we're gonna be using the Versamark tonight. But I wanted to show you girls a trick or a tip. Hi, Jean. Thanks for joining us from Phoenix. You rock. This is a Versamark reinker. And this is, holds true to any of those ink pads. What you do is you re-ink your ink pad is you squeeze a little bit of the ink. Thanks for sharing, Jean. You just rub the ink back and forth on your ink pad like that, and you end up with all those streaky little lines. Well, that's not cool, because if you go to stamp, you're just gonna get those lines. So what you need to do is grab yourself a kitchen spoon, a plastic spoon, whatever you want, something, a bone folder even works. If you wanted to use your bone folder, but if you use this with ink, you'll definitely get it inky dinky do. So I use a spoon and I just massage this back and forth like this and that will help eliminate a lot of those streaky lines. So the reason that I used the Versamark pad for these flowers, so we're using this stamp with Versamark, is because when you stamp with Versamark, it gives you a little texture. So do you see all those lines on there? It looks like I stamped them in just jade but I didn't, I actually used Versamark. And I'm gonna do that when we get started with class. I saved the bumblebee ones here. So I just wanted to show you how to re-ink an ink pad. For those of you that are new or haven't ever re-inked your ink pad, let's say it's been 10 years and you've never re-inked an ink pad, <laughs> that's how you do it. You can take your spoon to the kitchen sink and wash it or put it in the dishwasher, or you can use a baby wipe and just wipe it off. But that's how you will wanna re-ink the ink pad. Now, one other thing I want to show you, this is a, a learning, a little learning lesson for you girls. So these are two new stamp sets that I just got. They are in the new catalog. Does anybody recognize them? <laughs> they are way in the back. They are almost on the very last page. And these are host sets. So if you have a party or your own, you are your own party and you have $150 in sales, that's when you can get these stamp sets. There's summer days and touched, touched, what is it? Touched my heart. So uh, I want to show you how to put the stamp sets together. So you may or may not know this, but I thought now is a good time to teach you because what happens is I've done that one already. So this one, when you get a stamp set, and they're the cling stamp set, not photopolymer. When you get photopolymer, they come like this. <laughs> I've got most of them out. They're all on my blocks over here. Let's see if you can see this better. So they come on a sheet and they're just photopolymer. And so I've got these all out already and these are just scraps. <laughs> so so photopolymer is different. This is red rubber cling. There is a sticker sheet in here and that is what you're gonna use to put on the stamp. And then it comes on a sheet like this. The first thing I do, honestly, you girls, there's, there's different ways to do this and I'm just showing you what I do. So again, take it or leave it, however you like. I'm just trying to show you some tricks of my trade. 
And so I don't have a purpose for this paper. So the first thing I do is put it in the garbage <laughs> because I don't care for it. So that gets gone. <laughs> then what I do is there's a top and a bottom. So this is completely smooth. And so on this side though, you can see that there are little dividers for this waxy paper. So I peel off that just like so. And then I will find the stamp and that's what's gonna go on this sticker right here. So I am very gentle while I'm putting this down. It helps to start on one end and guide it with your eyes and your fingers so that it lines up. And usually if you get one side good, then you can just drop it and it lines up pretty good. Then what happens is this is what you use and then that will go on your block. And so that's sticky like this, okay? So I keep this sheet because I use it to put my stamp back on. So what I'll do is I'll take off all these little backs like this. They all just peel off and I do them one at a time because I don't wanna accidentally drop something into it and then mess up the stickers. So what I'm going to do is just line this one up. And I'll tell you girls, you get one shot. <laughs> If you get them crooked, I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just gonna stay like that, sorry. That's just what's gonna happen. So it's very important you don't try to do this while you're sitting on the couch watching TV. Hi, Karen. Um, you will not be happy with yourself in the end results. So then what happens is you'll do this for all of them and then that's what I store in my case is this sheet with the stamps. I do not keep the outline. Some people do. This could make for extra foam for putting your cards together. So I, to me, I don't need more um, stuff in my house. <laughs> I'm already building a she shed for everything that I don't have room for. <laughs> so, all right, that was a little bit of a 101 on the ink pads, putting stickers on. That was how to re-ink an ink pad and that was how to put your stamps together. And I know some of you may have known that already, so thanks for being patient and watching me do that. <laughs> there are a bunch of new stampers in the house though, and I wanna make sure everybody knows what to do when they get their fabulous Stampin' Up! supplies. So there we go. Hi, Lisa. Okay, uh, well, let's look back here. I just wanted to call out to um, my, little, my little niece, Lily, and Sedona, <laughs> look at, they made me a card. And this was some paper I had given them. And she wrote a little love note in here. Isn't this precious? And she made me a bracelet. So it says, Dear Chris, I made you a bracelet. And look at this little gift. I just got this yesterday. She made the bow. <laughs> and then she wrapped up. Look at this, girls. This is how much I'm, my nieces are loving on me. <laughs> so she made me a little present. And she wrapped it up in paper. And isn't this adorable? She made me a bracelet. So I am. Um, yeah, isn't that pretty? So I'm so excited. Thank you so much, Lily, for your gift. I love it. So girls, it doesn't matter what age you are. It's never too young. You're never too young to start stamping <laughs> and making cards. So, all right. With that being said, let's rock and roll, girls. So these are the beautiful cards we're going to be making tonight. These are the in color cards. And they're basically all five, the same setup. Look at me, I got professional. <laughs> I hope I didn't spell anything wrong, but I got professional. I made myself a little label here, girls. Here you can see my email address and my website and the host code properly put there. <laughs> Boom. So these are the cards. And what I've decided is we're going, I'm gonna show you all the tips and tricks on how to put them together and what we used. And also then we're gonna put a couple of them together and then I'll talk through, I've got some prizes I wanna give away and announce some of the upcoming other classes we have over the next couple weeks. So we are gonna be putting together the Bumblebee card and we're gonna to put together the Jade. So I am going to keep those here and I wanna show you a little bit about what, what was used. So this right here is the Medium Daisy Punch. That is in the annual catalog. It carried over from last year. So that's the Daisy Punch. So anybody who got the kits, I want a disclaimer. If you got kits from me and you're ever missing anything, do not hesitate to reach out to me. Brianna, I forgot to include your little guys in your kit, so I put them in the mail to you yesterday. I hope you had them today, <laughs> so or by the time you watch the replay. So that's the Medium Daisy Punch. 
Now in the center of the daisy is a half inch circle. I am sad, super sad, that they did retire the half inch circle punch. But girls, you need to have a half inch circle punch in your arsenal for the centers of flowers. I am not gonna stop using the half inch circle punch because Stampin' Up! doesn't sell it anymore. And in fact, I bought three of them at the end. <laughs> in case people are stamping with me and they want a half inch circle punch, I have them. They were just $6. Hi, Mary. Oh, yes. Thanks for sharing, Sue. So I got them. So I have a few of these in my, my stockpile in case anybody's looking for a half inch circle punch. So all of those are punched out with a half inch circle punch. The other thing too I want to call out is it's really hard to see this. Let's see if I can get up in the camera here. Do you see that there's texture on these little half inchers? So to get that texture, what was used was a hammered embossing folder. This was introduced in the holiday catalog last year. It carried over and it is available. So what I did is I embossed big pieces with this and then they all got punched out individually. So it wasn't like punching and then putting all these little pieces on here. So everybody who did the class with me, you should have, if you're going through your kit, you should have two of the espresso. And this is really hard to see, but there's two saffron, and then there's Daffodil Delight. And you should have six daffodils because three of the cards have two flowers of the daffodil. So you should have 10 of these little half inch circles, okay? Then what you'll also have in your kit are five leaves. These leaves, there's four of them that are pear pizzazz and there's one that's so saffron. So, uh, sorry, <laughs> soft sea foam. Soft sea foam looked much better with the jade than the pear did. That clashed. So we went with a softer, soft sea foam. So when you're looking at all your bits and parts in your kit, you should have four of this one and you should have one of this one. So if you're making these cards at home too, that's what you'll want to prepare. Those leaves come from the Forever Flourishing dies, which are my absolute now favorite die set in the world. Kelly and Karen, you have this on order. <laughs> It'll arrive soon, but it's this big leaf right here. This one is a very pretty die. This one's pretty. They're all pretty, and the stamp set that goes with this is amazing. So the suite is on back order, but you can still order this as a bundle right now. So that's where this leaf comes in, and that leaf, one leaf, is per one card, and I'll show you how that is put together. Then there's a little lace edging here. That little lace edging is actually from da, 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 the ornate dies. Um, it's the ornate borders dies. And this is the one that has all these beautiful borders. And the one that is used is this one. So for those that are doing the online class, make sure that you have five of these. <laughs> Math is hard sometimes. So I hope that all of you have five. So what you'll wanna do while you're waiting for something to like, while I'm working on it, you can just make sure that you go through and you pick out any little, uh, little innards <laughs> is what I call those. It's just to make sure they're all popped out. So you should have five of those and that comes from the ornate dies. Then the other thing, let's see here on here, the ribbon girls. Ooh, this is part of the in color ribbon. So they come in all five colors. And so we have all of them now. I am very sad to say that these two did not have a lot of inventory when the catalog went live. And I did order uh, a roll of each and I made swap cards <laughs> and I ran out of the yellow. So in your kits, you actually will have this one, which is a gingham bumblebee ribbon. So it's the same color and it looks really pretty too. It's just you're not going to have this exact one. So if you're wondering about your kits, about your ribbon, just know you do have that gingham ribbon instead. So you should have five little strips of ribbon that are 10 and 3 quarters inch, and that will, those will wrap around the card. Then the In Color DSP. Um, yeah, it's so sad when stuff goes on back order and you gotta switch things around. It's not cool. But hey, you gotta roll with the punches, right? <laughs> so. Here are the DSPs. So do you remember, I talked about that there's four different patterns. So those people that did the class, you will have three and two, meaning you'll have three of one pattern and two of the other. And you might have 
two or three. So, so in this case, you can pick which sides you want to use and go from there. So that's why you'll have two or three that are the same and then the opposite of the other pattern. So you have one of each of those. And these measure, girls, in case you're curious, they're just an inch and they're five and a quarter. And that works out great because when you are making multiple cards to cut an inch, you get one, two, three, four, five, six. You get six out of a, a sheet of paper, which is awesome. So that's a really great. So if you're ever working on multiple cards, then a one by five and a quarter is a good measurement. Then we have our bases. Our bases are each of the ink colors. So we have one of each of these, and this is just a quarter sheet of paper. So it's five and a half by four and a quarter. So we got all five of those. They're ready to go. And then we have our bases. <laughs> so this is a little bit different. This is your traditional five and a quarter because that is what's gonna get matted onto here. But then this measurement right here is actually seven inches. It's scored at four inches right here. So it's a little bit wonky because it's a card that opens like this. So, you know, that, that little bit gets cut off there. So again, those measurements are five and a quarter by seven. Now, for those that did the class, I had 32 people so far do the class. I created a PDF tutorial for this and you were emailed the tutorial. And so you will have all those measurements and instructions. So what I did here is you have a little bit that cut, gets cut off. So you're, if you're recreating these cards at home, just know you have a little bit that gets cut off here. So what I did is I used this piece to cut everybody's borders. So everybody who did the class, I cut these borders out. And so I got two of those borders. You can see two of those fit on here. And uh, you cannot put both dies back to back. I actually, on the big shot, lined all three of these up and I had three dies because Naughty Nancy and Barb and Mary lent me their dies. So I had all three dies lined up and then I did one, 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 and then I could do the other half of it. Hi, Vicki. So just know that when you have that little bit that's left over here, use that to cut your dies, uh, your border dies here. Okay. Everybody's doing okay so far. We're getting through all of our supplies first. And then we have here some stamps. So when we created this card, we knew that we wanted to limit the stamping on here so that those people who got the kits, there really is only a little one. There's really two things that are stamped, but you would get by with one. So the words are stamped. And then you saw that I stamped these flowers right here. So there's that little bit of texture on them. So if you look at this one, they're easier to see. You can see there's a little there it is. There's a little bit of texture on them. That little bit of texture, we talked about it earlier, it comes from a stamp from Comfort and Hope. It's that stamp right here. And we're using Versamark. Now, for those of you at home that do not have Comfort and Hope, find any background stamp that has a cool pattern to it, and that will suffice. And honestly, if you don't stamp them, they are going to look so pretty without them being stamped as well. So gave you some options on stamping them or not stamping them. So that's that. Now the, the words, these words come from Blossoms in Bloom. And Blossoms in Bloom is a new stamp set that is available with a big flower die. Uh, that actually, it looks like this. So that's a card that's made with this set. And so what was awesome about this is that this set is very versatile. It has happy birthday, thinking of you, sure do miss you, hello, thank you, I like you a lot. Bonnie would say, Bleh, and then get well soon. <laughs> so um, so that was a great set to put with this because you could, in essence, make all five cards with different sentiments. And so, so that is super cool. Okay, the other thing that I had a question on last night from somebody was about white paper. So when do you use thick whisper white and when do you use regular whisper white? So in this case, my card base is the actual cardstock, which is a little thicker, and my flap open is it's a th it's the regular whisper white. So I generally use whisper white unless I am using white for the card base. So this was a swap card that I received from Dino Rico, and she used thick. It's like you can hear that. 
This is a thicker card base. So if you're using white as your card base, it is beneficial or really, I would love it <laughs> to see that you use the thick, the thick. It just, it makes for a sturdier, stronger card. So that was a question that came up in class last night is when do you use the thick white and the thick vanilla paper? It's when you use a base that is white or vanilla. But in this case, if it's a matte or if it's like this, I use the, the regular whisper white. All right, girls, are we ready to, to get going? <laughs> so I hope so. <laughs> All right, so we have here our base. And for those that do are doing the class, I think that I'm I think that I left your cards unfolded. So you are gonna have to fold them. And if I folded them, you're still gonna need to burnish them. So grab your bone folder and you're going to burnish the edges. So there's one, and then I'm gonna do a second one right away. So that I have the second one ready to go. So as you're doing this class with me, you can do all the steps together or you can do one at a time. It really depends on what you want to do. Hi, Molly. So here are these two. So we're going to make two. So I'm going to just set these off to the side. But if you're stamping me with me with your sets, go ahead and fold the rest of your cards. I've got blue ink all over me from that ink pad. It's funny. So here we've got the bumblebee and the jade. So again, if you're stamping all of them, or working on all of them at the same time, keep your stuff handy. But what I've got here is you have to make a decision. Do you wanna use the words or do you wanna use the wood grain? And in this case, I I love the, how the, the words look on the bottom of this one. So grab your adhesive of choice and either liquid glue or you could use some tape runner. Stampin' Up! came out with some new tape runner called Stampin' Seal. It's very cool packaging. I haven't opened it yet. When you put this down, make sure that you look at the words. <laughs> I don't want you to put them on upside down. That would be sad because then you'd have to pull it off and restart. So, <laughs> all right, thanks for sharing, Arliss. All right, so what I've done here then is I wanna make sure I'm lined up good on those sides. And then I cut the paper pretty good. Sometimes, and normally, I cut the paper a hair longer so then I just trim it off because I'd rather have it a hair longer than a hair shorter. So then what you can do is decide what you want on the green or the whatever you're working on. In this case, I'm going to cover up the words and I'm going to have the wood grain showing. Okay. And the I think a lot of you if you got the cinnamon cider as your wood grain, I actually cut it so that your wood grain was going the long way because the wood grain in cinnamon cider looks really cool with it going the long way. So that's how you're going to adhere that onto here. Then what you can do is, so here's my disclaimer about stamping. I didn't know where to stamp these. So and generally I stamp things right away. I like to get it done and just know that I can flip it over if I make a mistake. Well, in this case, I didn't know exactly where to stamp this because the border die and then the ribbon. So I actually, I stamped them last. So if you don't feel comfortable doing that, because you'll, it's like, oh my gosh, I made a whole beautiful card and then I just stamped the words wrong. <laughs> you could always fix it with a banner or something, but just know that you can stamp your words if you want to now. But I'll be honest with you, these cards were really pretty without words. Almost only like one or two people stamped the words in class last night. So they went home and they said, I'm going to stamp the words when I know what I need to use the card for. So that's always like an option too, is to stamp when you, um, when you know what you need the card for. So the size of the strip Margaret's asking. So this was seven inches. And when I cut that at seven inches, it left a one and a half inch because paper is eight and a half inches, right? So when I cut this off, it gave me an inch and a half and it's five and a quarter this way. So when I cut that off, it allowed me to cut two of these out of the one piece, okay? So that's just answering Margaret's question on that one. So that's five and a quarter by one and a half. And it was just the remnants of the paper and I didn't want to throw it away. Next thing we can do then is just to get some structure and stability to the card, I will adhere this to the card base. Now, everybody's got different ways of putting cards together and there's no right or wrong. Um, my general rule of thumb is to assemble from the top down 
<laughs> but uh, this is a different kind of a card and it's easier putting the bow on or the ribbon on and putting this on when you have a little more sturdiness to the card. So that's why I'm choosing to put a little bit of liquid glue on this back now and to put that down onto the card base. The other thing for those that are doing the class, don't be afraid to mix and match up. Like if you think that you want to put yellow on the brown, um, Dawn last night put, I think she did yellow on the blue and it was so pretty. Don't be afraid to make the cards different than how I have them. I don't take offense. And honestly, when you're doing an online class with me, I'll never even see it unless you post your pictures, <laughs> which I love when you share your pictures. <laughs> so, so then what we're going to do is we're going to take these strips of paper and they're going to get adhered on to the top. I did the top because it's going to get covered up anyways with a ribbon. Now, in this case, if you get a strip and it's maybe this wide, the ribbon might be um, a little bit too narrow for it. So if you're doing the class with me and you got a little bit thicker of a border like this, I would say that this is just a little bit bigger than I want it. I'm using my Widow BB trimmer. Isn't it pretty? <laughs> I know so many people wanted it and they still want it when they see I use it. This was a free gift for signing up during celebration. So you got to hold this down really good. I took the little, uh, the little protector off of it because <laughs> it was in my way. So, so I trim this ever so slightly just to make it a little bit more narrow. So then grab some glue and you're just going to put a thin little line of it right along that bottom lip or bottom edge. Let's get this guy out of the way. All right, so now what I'm doing is I'm gonna put this on there. My goal is that these circles are just right of the border. If you have it up too high, you're gonna cover up the holes. So I'm gonna start it on one end and I am going to, so I'm looking for it and then I see where it is and then I bring it back down till I see, like I wanna see all the DSP through the holes. So I'm not putting it on the back. A couple people last night were trying to put it on the back and the reason I didn't is because it would have been up too high and you might see that seam. Okay, so there's one. Now do your next one. And again, if you're doing the class, you are welcome to do all five of these or come back and do them. Just depends on how speedy Gonzalez you are. So again, this one, let's just see here if that's gonna be thick. Um, I'm gonna actually I'm gonna hang out for a second and I'm gonna trim this one. So it depends on where you put the die on the big shot when you cut it. So let's see here. I'm going to do this without cutting off a finger. <laughs> I promise there will be no blood and gore in my videos, girls. <laughs> so, all right. That's okay that that sat. That gave the glue a little chance to get tacky for us. So again, I'm making sure that my holes or circles are just at the bottom. And I noticed that this one's a hair shorter. So I'm just kind of centering it. And there we go. <clears throat> so, everybody doing okay so far? Give me some thumbs up if you're doing okay, girls. Grab your tear and tape. This is going to be your next step. So, I'm grabbing my glue scissors. And, hi, Brianna. I forgot to tell you that my youngest is, is today. So, I will, oh, you're going to have to watch the replay. No problem, Brianna. You got the happy mail today. Good. So, Brianna is the one that I forgot to give her her in-color dots on Sunday when she was here at class. And so, I had to mail them to her. So, Happy birthday to your youngest. And so what I'm doing is I'm taking my tear and tape and I'm cutting it in half the long way. And I'm prepping this because this is where, so you can see on this card, the ribbon is continuous. You don't see the seam. That's because the seam is hidden right underneath this flower. So I'm going to prep this with a little bit of tear and tape <clears throat> right there. And then I'm gonna further cut this one in half and I'm gonna put a little bit of it right on this end here. And then I'm gonna flip it over and put some right in the middle. <clears throat> People were having a little difficult time getting the ribbon to go where it needed to go and getting it to stay. So my trick with that is this tear and tape. And mainly <clears throat> in those two or three spots, you could do a spot here and here, or if you like, you can also add it there. So what you're gonna do, I'm gonna cut this little frayed end off of this. 
So everybody has 10 and 3 quarters inches of, 10 and 3 quarter inches of ribbon. <clears throat> so it's just a hair longer than when you need it to be. My mom cut everybody's ribbon. Thank you, mom. Hmm? She did a little help for me and Gina helped me to get my kits ready. So I'm starting it where my flower is going to be. And I'm going to weave it to one side. Hi, Brenda. I'm going to flip it over. Brenda, we missed you. I did class today at Wells where I work. And Brenda usually does class with me there. We missed you. <clears throat> so then I've got that sticking there. Then this is going to wrap around. And it's going to meet right in the middle. Right there. Okay. So I did cut off a little bit more than I probably should have. But it's okay. So if this happens to you, do not fear. Your flower will cover that up, I promise. And I've got that sticky tape pretty long here, so it's it's pretty secure. And when I put the flower down, it's gonna even make it more secure. So for those of you, when I'm gonna just do one more, so you can see again how I did that, <clears throat> to give people time with the class watching a little time. So again, you take your tear and tape, and generally I don't cut tear and tape. It's a pain in the butt to cut tear and tape, but hey, in this case, it helps immensely when you cut it. And so I'm gonna cut that into two. And so this longer one I'm putting where my flower meets. I'm putting one on the end here near the edge. And then I'm going to put one right here. So I'm doing this because I do not ever, 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 ever use liquid glue with ribbon. And speaking of which, I, I emailed this to about five people this last week. If you need to have a suggested use of when to use what adhesive on what, I have these available. Email me and I will send one to you. Okay, so there's a suggested adhesive use guide with Stampin' Up's adhesive. So I use ribbon, I use tear and tape, or I use glue dots the majority of the time. Okay, so this is where your bumblebee comes in. Oh, that one, I'm going to use this one actually. So this one... Again, you're just going to start it underneath where the flower goes and then secure it. So eyeball it so it's straight, flip it over, and then eyeball it so it's straight. And what I'm doing is I'm lining it up right with that edge of the paper so you never even see the seam. And then flip it over again, and then you should meet it right in the middle of where the flower goes. Okay? Now, so there's a little prep work for that. So... So far, so good. Now, I'm still not going to stamp sentiments because what happens if my flowers or my leaves go over too far? So I'm still saving that for the last. So now we're going to work on flower power. <laughs> so flower from BMB. How many times did we say that last night, Bonnie? We said flower. So we've got, these are all punched out for everybody. So speaking of flowers for the class, you need four. <laughs> Two for each flower, Okay. And what you're gonna do is grab your Versamark pad. So this gives you a tone on tone look. So this is all gooed up. So Versamark is generally used when you're heat embossing, but don't be afraid to use it when you wanna give a cool background look to something. So look, let's see if I can focus in on that. It's blurry, blurry back up. Let's see if I can put my hand here if that makes a difference. There it is, see that? You would never think that that was Versamark. You would think that's the honeybee, or wait, the, the bumblebee stamped right on it. But honestly, if you had bumblebee, oh, you know what we should do? We should test it to see what the difference is, just in case so you girls can see a little difference. So, all right, there we, hi, Lula. I don't think I've seen you on here before. Nice that you joined us. Thanks so much for watching. Okay, the other thing though is when you're done with your stamp, you make sure you want to clean it. And let's get that Versamark all off of there. I want to show you girls the difference between using the Versamark and using the actual color. So let's grab this and we'll open that up real quick. Grab it. Hey, we get to use it together for the first time. All right, brand new ink pad. These are really like tight. So people take check and wipe it in there and that helps for these to slide. So I'm just gonna flip this over and we're gonna see the difference. Okay, we're gonna do it at second strength and we're gonna do it at first strength. So this is first strength, whoa, and then second strength, <laughs> whoa, and then burst mark. Okay, so check this out girls. I didn't even know I was gonna do this, but 
that's what Bumblebee looks like on it. It's so crazy and distracting. And then it's a little bit less and then it's very subtle. So again, it just depends. Like what is the look you're going for? So I'm so happy that I did. <laughs> we use the subtle or um, the Versamark on there. So that's just to show you a little bit different. So if you don't have the particular color ink pad, don't fear. You can always use Versamark to get that same tech or like the same tone on tone look. Okay, look at me. I cracked out a brand new chamois last week and it's hardly been used. Okay, so that's our flower power. So by the magic of TV, ha ha ha, I've got, I don't know if you can see it, but I got these guys done already. Boom, see, I worked ahead. <laughs> so for those of you at home, again, you don't have to do this technique but you could, if you don't have comfort and hope, go, go through your arsenal stamps and find something else that's really cool. Then what we do is find our bone folder and we are gonna curl our leaves. So look what I've done here. I've curled my petals. And so you can see that they're kind of curved up a little bit like that. So what you do, you have to be very gentle with this. I, so I'm taking the stamp side and I'm flipping it over uh, and you are just gently tugging on these little petals. If you pull too hard, you will rip them off. And it's not the end of the world. Don't cry. It's just paper. <laughs> but you'll just have to glue them back together. So don't worry about that one. You won't see that because that's going to be the bottom. Now there's two ways to do your flowers. I like my flowers pointing up, all my petals going up. And when I stamped with Gina, my friend, she <laughs> likes to do hers different than me. And I'll show you here in a second. She likes to have one set of petals going up and then I, and then one going down. So she would put hers like this. So again, if you're at home and you wanna do it this way, she would put hers this way so that they kinda, some are going this way and some are going that way. And then I like to put mine so that they're both facing up together and then Lisa who was stamping last night <laughs> she's like well they're gonna get flat anyway so why bother curling them <laughs> and so she didn't even curl hers so honestly it's whatever you want to do but that's what it's gonna end up for me so after you have them curled now if you would happen to break one off you're just gonna mend it back on and then it, you won't see it because it kind of gets crossed so hopefully none of you break your little petals but just in case you do you can just glue it right back on. So what you're gonna do is put a little dot of glue in the center of each one, and then these are going to get offset just ever so slightly. And because I'm using the liquid glue, it allows me to wiggle them around to get them exactly where I want them. So just like that. Okay, so <laughs> you girls making cards, you got 10 of them to do. <laughs> So you need, so I basically gave you two, four, 20 flowers. So get on it, girls. <laughs> so you're gonna put these together like that, all right? And then once you've got them prepped, then that's where the centers come in, okay? We talked about centers. We have Daffodil Delight and So Saffron and Espresso because it just, it wasn't, it didn't look good to have Daffodil Delight on here. So we went with Espresso in the center of the Bumblebee. And then we did, in the middle of the Just Jade, we did the Saffron. So I told you we were gonna make two cards today. So <laughs> I'm gonna get on, I yelled at you girls to get, <laughs> get curling your flowers and look at me, I'm a slacker and a half here too. So I'm gonna do those real quick. Again, I'm hardly pulling on these. It looks like I'm tugging on them, but I'm really not pulling very hard. It's like taking when you want to um, do wrapping paper ribbon and you curl that, you know, with the scissors. It's kind of what you're doing here. Okay, so we got that done. And then you're going to take your little dot of glue and put that in the center. Because there's so many flowers. When we were trying to prep for this class, I forgot that it was a double flower. And then it was like, well, then there's two flowers. And I was like, oh my goodness. If you do notice, and your girls are not hardly gonna see this, but there's a little notch out of a little tip of the flower here. If that happens, that is a mistake. Um, we try not to cut out pieces of your flower, but 
We left them in there because we didn't want to waste it because it can get covered up when you put, you just have to pay attention to it and it'll go behind that flower. So I noticed there was a little bite mark. Somebody ate a little piece of that one and it <laughs> it kind of has a little, a little baby divot and you probably might not notice it or the person getting it might not. Um, the kind of glue tammy that I'm using is the Stampin' Up! sells this. It's Tombow Mono Adhesive, Mono Liquid Glue. It comes with a thick end and it comes with a thin end. I Somebody asked me the other day, do I ever use this end? Not in my life. I've never used that end of the glue. <laughs> I'm curious, has anybody that's watching used the thick end of the glue? And it's crazy because the thick end of the glue is the, so the bottle stands up. But if you have the bottle standing like this, then the glue isn't where you need it to be at this tip. So that's when I have, you can get these little guys on Amazon, or you can use a little yogurt container jar to put your stuff standing up in. But you always want to keep your glue bottle so that your glue is ready to use, and so it's facing down. Okay, good question. Uh, so Stampin' Up! sells that. They're $4. They're not very expensive whatsoever, and you get lots of cards out of there. And just when you think it's done, <laughs> the joke is that you get 20 more cards out of it. <laughs> so, all right. Boom. So here we go, girls. Flower power. I feel like I'm Mario and I got my flower power here. I got my bigger Mario guy going on. <laughs> so flowers. These are ready to go. Next are leaves. Hi, Angela Orvis. So next are leaves. I said that you had five leaves. You have one soft sea foam and five like this. The pear pizzazz. You're going to have a little bit of the middle in here and it's going to just you pull that out. Oh, so uh, Lula's saying that her glue clogs. I had that happen to me last week. Somehow it wasn't it wasn't on tight, and so glue came out a little bit, and I had a big, big glue ball booger last week. If you girls watched me last week, you saw that. Um, but I keep, I generally keep my glue like this. That keeps the fresh glue at the bottom. And I find that, like, when you have reinkers, I store my reinkers upside down. Because whenever you store them this way, the top gets this weird film to it or it gets you know as you store like glitter glue and all that kind of stuff you always store your glues and adhesives upside down so that they're ready to use and the best stuff is right on the bottom at the tip so I'm sure I'm wondering Lula if you don't if you don't maybe store yours that way it's a good idea to always store it that way yeah right Elaine you probably didn't even know there was another end on there that's funny <laughs> so okay back to our leaves girls Bring out your Stella pen. She is your friend. <laughs> That's kind of like a rhyme. I'm a poet and I don't know it. And you're going to Stella up your leaves, girls. So this is a glitter pen. And I'm. it helps when I do that. So you can see that there's shimmery glitter right on the tip of that leaf. So Stella is a girl's best friend. So go for it and Stella up your leaf. It's easier to do this before you cut it apart. It, it can be done afterwards, uh, but and you might not use as much if you do it after the fact, but to me, when I can do it over the top of this paper, I don't care if I go outside the lines a little bit because then it doesn't end up on my card base. So um, pull out your little pieces. I don't pick out your parts ever, girls. When I die cut for you, <laughs> I leave the picking up, up to you. I'm sorry. I, it's more important to tie your bows, I think. <laughs> so, so I'm doing these two to show you what Stella's about. Um, she lasts a very long time. She's in our catalog as well. She's eight dollars. <laughs> a very inexpensive, inexpensive controlled version of Glitter Girls. So it will not wipe off and get glitter all over your face and in your eyes. <laughs> so there's Stella. So we got those two. So again, through the magic of TV, I have mine already stellaed and on piles over here for me. Hi, Patty Spurlock. So now what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to cut your leaves into parts. Uh-huh. That's what's happening. So you can see over here, I'll set this leaf here. You can see how I've got it cut. So I'm pretty sure it goes like that. Okay. So that's our leaf. We're cutting it apart. Girls, I've used this leaf on six cards <laughs> since I've gotten the set already. What you do first is you cut the top off like that. So that gives you the top part. And then what you're gonna do is cut off the left side. So just straight up to the left of the stem. You're gonna, and they stay together because they're connected by that one leaf right there. Okay, so you've got that set. 
And now do the other leaves. So I've got three, I got three piles done already. So I'm doing my fifth and my fourth one now. Okay, so you have your leaves. So the reason I'm cutting the leaf apart is I want it to look more spread out. If I would have left that leaf together, it would not have looked like this. So if you like the look of keeping it together, you're, you're able to do that. A water break. Okay, so we're going to do the bumblebee first. What you're going to do is grab tear and tape. That works good. The liquid glue is okay. Uh, I felt like the tear and tape worked best for me when I put, <laughs> honestly, this is what I did. I put a piece through the middle, like the, and it's not the middle, it's the middle of the flowers at a diagonal here. So I put a strip right like this, and then I put another strip, and actually you can see my tear and tape through the back there, but I'm just gonna put, and I'm gonna pull that off. Hi Ruth, thanks for joining. I'm gonna do one more, just like that. So I've got a little bit of double-sided tear and tape down here. This first peaky flower, oh, that looks really cool in the camera. <laughs> Look at it, all my flowers lined up. This first one goes off to the side like this, and I'm gonna catch it on the tear and tape right here, so I'm catching the bottom. Then this one is the, the one that comes out the side over here, so that's where I'm gonna try to cover up my seam with the, the little bit of the seam gets covered up here, so I'm gonna go like that, and I'm catching the tear and tape. And then this last one, you can have it, I have it coming out like this, but again, you can have it come up more. You could have it come down. Like if you don't want to put any words down here, you could have this come out even further that way. It's, it's, it's your card. I love it when you make it yours and do it however you see it. So I'm going to stick those down now. Grab, Ooh, I don't know where my, oh, there it is. I got to <laughs> glue my tops on girls. Hang on. Wait for it. Wait for it. We gotta get our little innards on here. Okay, so that was the espresso with the bumblebee. Okay, so I'm just gonna kind of eyeball what I've got going on for my flowers right now. Oop, I put that one on upside down. <laughs> so that one, the bumbles are going down and this one, the bumbles are going up and that's okay. So I'm gonna just kind of set these where I think they're gonna go. And I think that looks like I want this to come down a little further like that. And so if you don't press this into your tear and tape, you have the ability to pull it off and reposition it. So I like that like that. So I've got a dimensional behind the one and then I have, I think I might have a dimensional. So this is where it's up to you if you wanna use dimensionals or not. You could make this one flat and pop up the other one or you could pop them both up. And so in this case, I will grab my liquid glue and I'll put a big dollop that looks like it was a lot. And again, I want to look to see where my seam is, and I want to put the one petal so it's straight over that seam. That's going to hide it. And then I'm going to grab a dimensional here on this one. And, oop, I got the top off, but not the bottom. I'm going to grab two of my baby dimensionals for this one. If you have the regular size dimensionals, that works too. This is where if you had a little bite out of the card, <laughs> the one flower, you'd want to make sure that was up there. And so I'm just going to stick this on here like that okay all right look at that isn't it pretty all right lastly for those that are doing the class on this card all right disclaimer these little in color enamel dots are fabulous they look amazing but you have to be very careful when you pick them off of this acetate sheet you it works good if you have a pick tool which i don't have mine right now it's in my bag in the other room because I had class at Wells today and I uh, left my bag in the other room. When you grab this, you want to grab it and make sure you get underneath it. You Last night, Bonnie was having issues with, and Elisa too, the top part comes off and it's just a clear little dot and the color is actually on the bottom. So you want to make sure when you grab your dot that you pull it from behind. Like I'm bending this acetate at the same time that I'm picking it off. And just, you have three of each color and just kind of position them where you want. And honestly, you're more than welcome to put them wherever you see them on your card. If that little top part picks off and it's loose, what I do is I pick off the colored part, put it down, put a little dot of my glue right over the top and I set the clear right over it and it will stick again, okay? 
All right, so far so good, right? <laughs> We're gonna go finish this jade one here because this one had my big gap and you're gonna see I'm gonna cover that up. So grab your tear and tape and get yourself a couple pieces. Now again, double-sided tape works too. If you don't have tear and tape, sticky tape works. And I'm gonna put one through the middle here and pick that off. And I'm gonna pick or put one right there so they're kind of in the center strip here. Now be careful with this one. You wanna make sure you grab your soft sea foam for your color. And the one leaf comes out the top like that. One leaf comes along the bottom. Now this is where it's important for me to find where my seam is so I can try to cover this up a little bit. I'm gonna go like that. And then this last one, I'm gonna go just to see once what it looks like. So that'll go here and that will go, oh, I don't like that. <laughs> see, this is where if you don't stick it down really tight, then you can rearrange things till you get it good. So I'm gonna move this guy down a little further and then my leaf can come down. So this is how I'm gonna do that one. Perfect. And grab some liquid glue. You girls doing okay? <laughs> so it's not so intense compared to last week, right? Wow, those fun folds last week were a little intense for all of us, but they were amazing and beautiful cards, I'll tell you. I have two of them to give away, too, to, to a lucky winner. Okay, so we're going to put this one like that. Okay, so... That wasn't so bad. Now grab your in colors. So again, if you want to switch up your gems or your little adhesive dots and put different colors on them, I gave everybody three of each color so that you can either keep them the same or mix them up and do what you want. I'm going to put one there. And then again, I'm, I'm folding the acetate back as I pry it off of there. Okay, so... There's one little thing that I forgot to grab from the other room, and I feel bad because this is like the icing on the cake. And you'll have to give me a vote, girls. I don't want to run away for 30 seconds and come back unless you want me to because <laughs> I hate to leave you. But if you see on here, it's shiny and it's shiny. I, I want to show you how to do that. But I don't want to run away if, unless you girls tell me it's okay if you give me permission to leave because I have to run to the other room and grab what you need to do to make it shiny. So give me thumbs up and give me loves if it's okay for me to run to the other room real quick because I'm going to leave these other three here to put together another time. And I know that there's three more cards that the girls that are making these cards can still work on because I want to go through some door prizes with you and show you my upcoming classes. But... I know that I'm about 10 seconds ahead of you, and if I don't get any thumbs ups or any likes, then I know that, it's, <laughs> that, that I should keep going, but I want to show you. Oh, I'm seeing it. Okay, so girls, if anybody asks what's going on while I'm gone, just say she went to go get something she forgot. So intermission for 30 seconds. <laughs> Okay, I'm coming back. I'm coming back. Okay, I got permission and I'm back. That was fast, right? <laughs> All right, so for the grand finale for this card, <laughs> this is the star, besides Stella, Stella's a star, but the star for this card is this. <laughs> so this is Stampin' Up's Fine Tip Glue Pen. And this is funny because Tammy Sokolik is watching. I think she is still watching. And oh, I've told Tammy in the past that I don't generally ever use this glue. It's like nail glue. So if you have fake nails and you have to use that really strong glue or if it's crazy glue, this is kind of like that. I know a lot of people have this for putting embellishments on cards. So if you look at this, fine tip glue pen is on here. Small embellishments, glitter, detailed die cuts. So... This is what I use for the center of the flower. So there was something that we had called crystal effects, which makes it glossy. So this is when you take this off, it's a really fine needle-like thing, and it goes into the center of this. And it comes out, so we used this today because I made a card at Wells, and we wanted the headlights to look shiny. <laughs> so what you're gonna do, so last but not least, 
use a glue like this and you're going to roll this over the centers of your flowers. So this is the last thing that you do on this card because it takes this glue about 20 minutes to dry, depending on how thick you put it. So you less is best, and then once you have enough out here, you can kind of spread it to where you want it. And so right now, it looks like you can't even see it. <laughs> it's this one that I did. And, oh, you can see there's a little bit of gloss to it. Oh, yeah, there it is. Okay, so that's what I do on this card to make my flower centers look shiny. And here it was placed incorrectly. Oh, you need it. So I don't know if they sell new tips. Um, this this glue bottle I think is about seven bucks. I generally had bad experience with the fine tip glue, so I'm gonna actually, girls. This is done, and it's got. It, you can see it looks a little shiny and wet. Isn't that cool? I'm gonna set it off to the side though because I do not want to wreck it. So we're gonna do that, and um. When, and I'm not going to do the next one right now because I want to stamp a sentiment on it. But the trick when you're done with this is you need to cover it up right away. Uh, it dries fast. And the this cover does come off. Um, she uh, Patty was talking about needing a new tip. Like, this does come off. And, like, you want to maybe clean that out every now and then because it could get gunky. And then the other thing is that this part comes off as well. But as soon as you're done... You want to get this pin in here. And what I do is I put my finger here on it as a guide. And then I use, I just use my finger as a guide to help it get in there. Because it's such a, it's, it's finer than a pin needle. So that is the fine tip glue pen. I don't generally use it to put embellishments down. But I use it to add gloss to, to things. And that's what I did to the centers of those cards is, I added the fine tip glue pen. I would not use this liquid glue to do that. I don't think you'll get the same effect. So this dries wet looking. So it gives it that wet finished look. Now, I am gonna stamp a sentiment on this card because I wanna show you how I will stamp the sentiments. Now for you at home that have your kits, you'll have to stamp your sentiments. If you don't have sentiments and you live local, come on over, I got class tomorrow night. Or I know some of you too, if you're not coming over to class, I'll set them outside and you can stamp them if you want to come over. But I think most people have different sentiments at home. And in this case, you want to find a sentiment that fits there. So in this case, I would use the thinking of you there. I would not use a long skinny one because that will not look so hot there. So these are photopolymer stamps. Hi, Guppy. And what we're going to do is grab your memento ink pad and a stainless steel straight pin works perfect. Yes, Verna, that is a really good idea. That helps to clean that up, to get that unclogged. The other one here I have is Hello, and that's a cute little one that would fit there too. Um, so actually, I use a lot of thank you cards, hello cards. Uh, I'm gonna put hello on here. So girls, take a deep breath, and guy, because <laughs> Guppy's watching, or maybe he's not anymore, but um, so, Take a deep breath. You just made a beautiful, really pretty card. Take your time stamping the sentiment. I highly recommend using a photopolymer stamp so that you can see through it. You can see the ink on there. So don't rush. Take your time. Hover over the top until you see where you want it to go. And then when you go straight down, give it a second. I like the ink to hit the paper and make contact and then pull it off and just take your time with it. <laughs> That's how I would say successful stamping is that you have to be in control of the stamp. <laughs> Sometimes I see people stamp really fast and then they don't get a nice even, like if they go like that, they don't get a nice even image. And so when you stamp straight down, straight up, good pressure. A little too much pressure on the O. So that's why you want to have white paper next to you so that you can practice, so that you get it stamped the way you want it. Okay, so lastly I did, I stamped the hello. Now if you want to put a sentiment on the inside, I would generally put it up here closer near the top so that I have room to write a pretty little love note in there. So yay! Okay, thanks for letting me go get the fine tip glue pen. It crossed my mind five times. Where did it go? It crossed my mind five times since I started that I thought, oh no, I forgot. I forgot to <laughs> go get the fine tip glue pen. So, all right, girls. 
So I know that the class consisted of five cards. So if you're still stamping with me, don't fret. You have time. You can keep working on them. I wanted to share with everybody a little bit of what's coming up in the future for upcoming classes because we're stamping live on Thursday nights now. And next, I want to show everybody what's coming up next week and then the following week. And I think that takes us into, oh, I don't know. That takes us close to the end of the month. And then I want to um, do some drawings um, or not necessarily. I want to show you a contest I have. <laughs> so, and then I have from the fun folds last week. So, <clears throat> I'm gonna put that away. So I'm gonna flip the what was I gonna do? Flip, I'm gonna flip the camera down. I just want to tell you girls real quick too. Um, here's my email address. If you need to get yourself a copy of the scavenger hunt, I've already gotten six of them handed in. This is not meant to cause you any hardship or harm. It's questions on here that make you look at the catalog. I tell you, sometimes I look at the catalog 20 times and I'll still see something for the first time because I was oblivious to it. So if anybody wants the scavenger hunt or if you want information about my in color, so these are the new in colors. I have an in color club where you get, starting in July, you get one color each month for five months and it's $40 and you'll get an ink pad, a refill, a pack of the cardstock, a whole pack. You get the color of the six by six, so eight sheets. You get two of those card bases and envelopes so these guys right here you would get your matching color of those you would get the roll the whole roll of ribbon the adhesive backed dots and the marker so you get all of those colors with this club and so if you want information hi Gina B hey we have a guest we have a guest in the house look Gina. Oh, hi guys. <laughs> we have a surprise stamper. He dropped off the cheers. Oh, yay. Yeah. Oh my gosh. So <laughs> <laughs> I threw her off. Oh, Sorry. Guys. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> so we had class on um, Tuesday night and I had bought new chairs for in the classroom and the backs weren't put on them. And Chris, me, went head over tea kettle and landed on my butt and I hit my head on the wall <laughs> and it did not feel good. <laughs> and I think some of you watching were here with me. And so I called my mom. And my mom said, your father will come and pick those chairs up tomorrow and put them together. <laughs> and so Gina is staying with my parents and she brought them back tonight. So yay. Yeah, we have four chairs so now. I have four comfortable chairs for us to sit on and not hurt ourselves on. So, okay, wow. she's smart. <laughs> so Gina, that's Gina B. So Gina helped me design the cards for class tonight. Yay. <laughs> so I, I always cherish my stamping time with Gina. So. Okay, so we have wonderful chairs, yay. So any, anybody's interested in this information, <laughs> Patty Spurlock says hi. <laughs> so if anybody wants information, <laughs> she says hi back, Patty. If anybody wants information on my In Color Club, um, you, as one month, you're the host and you get $18 in free merchandise and a pack of rhinestones or pearls. And then lastly, on my paperwork, girls, this is the schedule. And if you want a copy of this, this will outline the rest of the summer when I have online classes. So the launch party and in color card class online. Next week monthly. Paper pumpkin. And then we have the ornate. So every time I reference online in red, that's your cue for Thursday night stamping with me. So email me if you want a copy of that. Because then you can keep it for your records handy and put it in your catalog. So yes, it was a great card design. So we took like three cards and we married them together to do that. So yay okay so a couple things that are coming up the we talked about the monthly class so gina and i designed these cards together i love it that you got to meet gina she's my partner in crime for stamping <laughs> so this is a gate fold so that one opens up like that and there's a, a layer in there that's using the new world set so this is what we're making next week girls this one is the card i showed you earlier with the blossoms and bloom and that one's next week, Thursday as well, along with, oh my gosh, girls, this leaf. Do you recognize it? It's this leaf that we cut apart. Oh, I love this. This is the Forever Greenery, I don't know if I said that right, Forever Flourishing Dyes. And so we use that one and that one, and then I call that one like the, <laughs> the horn. It's like, it rolls up like a horn. And we got to use the new hoop. So Jean Benson, you were wondering what I'm doing with the gold hoops, I think that was you. So we put a little gold hoop in here. So next week, girls, we're going to be live doing these. I still have kits available. So if anybody wants me to mail a set of kits in the mail, it is they're 15 
Plus shipping is usually about $3 or free with a $30 order if you want these kits. I have about five sets left. And then the following is Paper Pumpkin. And then right after Paper Pumpkin is the Ornate Garden class. This is four cards. This one's a bit of a fun fold. It's a cute different fold. It showcases the DSP on both sides. Easy, because all you have to do is stamp whatever you want there. I know Susan already signed up for this class, so that's exciting. Bobby's already signed up for this, so that's cool. Um, Bonnie, I think, is as well. So there's a bunch of girls signed up. And this, you look at this, girls. This is that little border die that we use here, and it's actually put right on the back. And then adding, oh, my gosh, look it. It has the leaf down there as well. These are the four cards that I made with this leaf. This one too, this uses the big daisy and then that leaf cut apart. Girls, you're gonna want this die before it's set and done. You're gonna want this leaf die. Oh my gosh. This one's a fun fold too. It opens like that and it uses the daisy. Can you could stamp whatever sentiments you want. And this one's the ooh la la card. I've got this little guy going backwards. He's gotta get fixed or he's gonna not be happy. Okay, huh? there it goes. This one is your beautiful. You could make this into a wedding card. Do you have any weddings coming up this summer? You could stamp on here, happy wedding day would fit in there nicely. And it's got all these little ornate little gold pieces. So this is July 2nd, girls. I have not even started to prep for this class. So anybody is welcome to sign up for this. Again, it's, um, this one's 15, what is this one? No, I lied. This one's 12 with a $20 order if you're local and then there's shipping. This one's 15 or 25 and then shipping if you're not local. Then one more thing I wanna show you girls. I know that I have a lot of demonstrators that are watching and customers. So I wanna show you something that I'm doing that will really help you with designer series papers, designer series paper. So I'm offering this as a class and this will appeal to you if you're a customer because it really helps you see all the colors that coordinate together and what is all in the pack. And then if you're a demonstrator, you can use these in your classes. Lisa, um, the next week's class, I don't have your email address. So Lisa, you're watching. This is my email address. Send me a quick email and I will send you all the information that you need for next week's class. So we can get that in the mail to you. I have everything all prepped already, so I can put it in the mail by tomorrow or Saturday. So this is going to be my paper sampler class, girls. So, um, oh, Lisa, you can, yeah, watch the replay too, but then here's my email address. So email me um, the, the information you're looking for for next week and I'll send that to you. So this appeals to everybody, girls. Don't think just because it's on a sheet of paper like this, it's not meant for you. I'm gonna be putting together, so every pack of designer series paper, this is gonna be the class where you will get, you will get the, the eight and a half, I'm gonna print all of this for you. You'll get every DSP name, just like that. Okay, so you're gonna get all these sheets of paper and I will cut for you all of your two by two squares and I will cut all your one inch circles. So if you are uh, you love to use Stampin' Up! products and you like things to know like how things coordinate, this will show you the colors on the side. It will list the colors at the top and it will put a nice two inch by two inch square right here. So this is the world of good. I've got this one done. So all the ones I could pre-order paper I've done. So this is flowers for every season. I'll get all the colors. All my favorite ones I put on the front and then I got a, I ran out because I did a swap card, so I got to fix that and put them on. They just arrived, but here's all the other colors. So you'll you'll be able to take these and keep these handy when you're stamping. So if you have this paper, you can say, oh, well, I could see how these colors look together. So this is the ornate garden, which I just showed you, and that's just a one sider, girls. This is the forever greenery. This goes with these dyes. These leaves match so nicely. It's all your greens along the side. Isn't it really cool to see this like that so that it's just all in, in your face at once? <laughs> then here's In Good Taste. And this is a double-sided. This is 24 sheets of paper you get in this one. So 24 different uh, designer series papers. Hi, Carol. So, and again, on the double-sided, I give you enough circles so that you can do, do both sides with the circles. And then here was this, I showed you this a little bit earlier. So this is going to be a, a class that I have coming up. I haven't set the date for it, but keep your eyes open for it. It's gonna be $26 if you pay with credit card or 25 if you pay cash or check. And it will include shipping it to your place. 
It will include all of this white cardstock and it will include all of the pieces that you need to glue on. And we're gonna pick a night sometime in July where we'll put our pieces together and I'll give you some tips and tricks and how I put it together. So super, super cool. So that is a class that's coming up. Um, I know that people have told me that they're interested in it, so I'm gonna go forward with, with it. But I did this as a, I, as a leadership training. So uh, that's what was given to me in my leadership training. And I thought, well, I will pass this forward to see if anybody else is interested in it. And there were interests, there were people, were people interested. So yay. So give me some thumbs up if you like this idea so I can see it come through in a second and see if you girls are interested in this. So um, perfect for customers and for demonstrators. So, all right, we're winding down our time together, girls. And so, oh, I might hand up and go so, over the whole thing. <laughs> it's like, whoa, getting you. <laughs> so we're winding down our time of Stampin' Live in the uh, makeshift hive for right now. So I know that some of you joined a little bit later in the game. Hi, Amy. And so for those that joined a little bit later, I announced earlier in the evening that we're gonna go with Stampin' Live in the hive and you girls are all my honeybees. <laughs> so yeah, it's Christine with all our honeybees because my team for Stampin' Up! is the Be Happy Stampers and I love bees. I don't like it when they sing me but I like bees because <laughs> I like the black and the yellow, but they're not fun when they hurt me <laughs> or you. But anyway, so it's Stampin' Live in the Hive, and we took off the word Thursday because then we could be live anytime. So super fun. So and I've dedicated every Thursday night for the rest of the summer to stamping with you. And um, this class is free unless you choose to do the cards with me, um, either um, by getting them completed or as kits. And I always appreciate every order and anytime you buy the class for me or if you get the kits for me, it helps me to be able to offer this class for free because I would be making this video um, for those people that do the kits and this way I get to do it live in front of everybody and all of you get to benefit from it. So all those people that are buying from me and supporting me, I really truly appreciate it. I couldn't do this without you. So if you're ever looking to order, I had my host code down and I generally, if you tell me that you're placing an order for a specific online class, when you sign up for that class, that counts as your order to get the cards for free. And if you're local, I love it when you come and stamp with me in person. Oh, we've been having a heyday of getting back together. Oh, yes, Wendy likes the Facebook Lives. Hi, Diane. Thanks for joining. You're good, Diane. You can always go back and watch the replay for some good laughs. <laughs> Diane, you will be very happy to hear that my dad and Glenn uh, put the chairs together and Gina just dropped them off and so there will be no more head over tea kettle. My head hurts really bad right here, but it doesn't keep us from stamping. <laughs> so Diane was there with me that night. So, um, so was Bonnie. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, all right, girls. So I want to put the camera down and I want to show you a couple things that I'm giving away. So last week we did the fun folds. We made this beautiful easel card using the world turns or the world is mine or beautiful world. That's what it's called. I like to call it everything but what it is. Um, so come, drum roll. Brrr. Okay, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Kate, Poppy, you are the lucky lady who wins this card. Thank you for watching last week. I'm very, very excited that you could join. It says miles apart, but still in my heart. I hope that you either save this and treasure it or find somebody who will love this card. So I will make sure I get that to you. This was our accordion card and it was using a technique with the hinge stamping. And so we used thanks from Magnolia. Good morning, Magnolia and our little butterfly from the Beauty Abounds. And so it opens like this. So if you missed these two cards last week, Girls, all you have to do is go back to the video section in my Facebook page. Honestly, there's 50 Facebook Lives that I've done since March 23rd. Lots of fun things and techniques and tips and tricks to, to go watch. And you'll see how we made this card. So drum roll. Okay, winner, winner, chicken dinner. Jean Maxwell, yay! She's from Phoenix, Arizona. You were watching last week and your name was drawn for this card. So you know what? I will pop this card in the mail to you. Yay. All right. Girls, I have something else that I'm gonna give away. And you're gonna look at me and think, what am I gonna do with this set? So, it is a French set. And I don't know why I was sent this, but Stampin' Up! accidentally sent me a French set. <laughs> and so I thought, well, instead of this French set sitting on my shelf collecting nothing but dust, I thought that somebody out there watching me tonight 
would really love a set that's in French. So <laughs> is that true? Can you girls give me some thumbs ups or some hearts if you speak French or know people who speak French that would love a card made with this? We figured out last night that this stands for a grand kid, <laughs> I think, or a grandchild, something like that. And so, um, yeah, uh, all you have to do to get your name into this drawing is tell me a French something. Mercy, CG, oh, CG said mercy, <laughs> love it. So, okay, so for those girls that want a shot at, I'm gonna do a drawing for this and I'll do it live next week at the end of our monthly class. If you are interested in this set, I need to keep track of it in one spot, okay? So to keep it simple for me, to make sure I don't miss anybody, instead of replying in all the comments in like in here, like like all I see your comments, that it gets confusing, email me. Just send me a quick email and just say, hey, put my name in the drawing for the French set. And then what I'll do is I'll put your name on a slip of paper and then next week we'll do a drawing for this and I will mail this set to whoever is interested in, you know, whoever wins it that wants to be in the drawing. Oui, I think Patty's saying oui. So I, the French, the, the little bit of French that I know is parlez-vous français? And then I know oui, oui. <laughs> and that's all that my grandfather <laughs> ever taught me. So Paul Elaine says parlez-vous voirs. Yeah, parlez-vous voirs. So I can't even say it. They were getting mad at me last night when I was trying to speak in French. I was trying to I was trying to say all these words and it was not happening. It wasn't working so good. So again, if you're interested in the French set, I want to give it away. I don't want it. Uh, just email me and I'll put your name in for the drawing. So woo, girls, we kept it down to about an hour and a half. Yay. Last week was two hours and 22 minutes. So woo. Um, do we miss anything? Did we forget to do anything? <laughs> I feel like I'm speaking from London. Um, so I think I'm looking around. Look, oh, I got my list here. Let's just check it twice. So we well, talked about white paper. We talked about my extra kits. We talked about the sampler class. I showed you how to put your stickers on your stamp set. We put stamps together. We re-inked stamp pads. We put, oh my gosh, we put the... Um, if you're missing your parts on your kit, just email me. I'm human. <laughs> I miss things. So I never want you to be missing parts. So, and then the French giveaway and we did the names for the class. So girls, we got through everything on my list and I checked it twice. So on that note, I am going to go out for the first time since this whole pandemic crazy started. My coworkers invited me to happy hour and I told them, nope, I'm stamping live in the hive tonight, but I'll come out after. So I'm headed out for the first time, actually, since this all started to meet a couple coworkers for a drink. And my mom will say, you only have to have one. And so, yes, mom, just one. <laughs> so, all right. So that's what I'm off to. And then I'm back to work tomorrow. And I will see you girls and guys next week, Thursday at six sharp. So just remember, if you're trying to watch, It'll show up in your newsfeed right at 6 p.m. So I enjoyed stamping with you tonight. I, sh I loved sharing these cards with you and everything that we went over. I hope that you enjoyed it. And again, I appreciate everybody for sticking with me all through these Facebook Lives. And it's sounding like it's going to keep going. So I'm so excited for that. Thank you, everybody. Lots of sunshine and happiness and hugs to everybody. Love you. Bye.